up. So the greater one's emotional intelligence, the easier and more successful life gets in every aspect. You will find the more you increase your emotional intelligence, the more you will accomplish with a lot less effort. Does that sound wonderful to everybody? Because when you're emotionally intelligent, you're making conscious choices of the thoughts that you think, the words you choose, the foods that you put in your mouth, the sleep that you do or do not get, the exercise that you choose to do in the middle of the day to get your blood flow in your brain or not, the people you surround yourself, the TV shows that you watch, all of these things affect your level of human potential, every one of them. So when you're more emotionally intelligent, you're now in control of these choices. So I could say, I love pasta. I love it. And I'm an emotionally intelligent person. But if I eat pasta in the middle of a work day, do you think I'm going to be on my A game by 3 o'clock? Absolutely not. I will want to take a nap. So I'll eat pasta, but I'll eat it at night when I can feel tired afterwards, right? It's literally making these conscious choices. I had a sugar addiction. My addiction came from my childhood. Most addictions to things, by the way, come from pain. It's the, um, the external manifestation of internal pain. So my sugar addiction was how I coped. It was a chemical way that I coped with my childhood, right? So when you can identify the root of what causes that problem, you can actually uplift, unroot it, and plant it with new beliefs. So I really seriously struggled with this pretty much my whole life until I had my children. And I was 31 at the time. And having two kids at the same time put me in a state of sleep deprivation that I never experienced in my entire life. <laughs> And it didn't feel good because after a year of it, I was like, okay, when am I going to feel normal again? Like, I just can't even get it together. And I finally got back into a rhythm where I started to feel like I was getting it together and I was getting more productive with work. And I went to the office one day and I had this huge checklist and I was cranking through it. How many of you have ever had those days where you're like, I'm just on my A game, I'm laser focused, I'm getting everything done? I like that feeling a lot. That's that work, get a lot done with less effort. Right? How many of you know the days where you're mental mush and you're sitting in front of your computer for hours not really getting anything done? I don't like those moments. So I took my kids to school. I'm, I took my kids to school, but then I went back during lunchtime for this Halloween party. And I ate the icing off of a cupcake. And icing was my all-time favorite transportation method of sugar. And then I went back to my office that day and I felt like canceling all my meetings, canceling all my phone calls, taking a nap under my desk, and my creativity was gone. And I changed everything in that moment. Because I went from, I can't have that, which, by the way, the diet industry is very damaging in the scarcity mindset of you can't have, you can't have. It's a very scarcity mindset uh, methodology. And I went from that old scarcity mindset, like I shouldn't have it, it's sugar, to I don't have time to feel this way ever again. I don't have time to feel like I want to take a nap in the middle of the day. And my entire emotional connection, remember, there was a deep-rooted emotional connection to being soothing for me as a child. And I shifted it into I don't have time for that because I don't have time to feel tired anymore. And in that very instant, changed my entire relationship with sugar. And you could put an entire table filled with desserts in front of me right now, and I won't touch them. And I won't touch them not because I can't have them. I won't touch them because I don't want to feel tired. Do you see how different, how powerful, how empowering that mindset is versus, oh, I can't have that? Or, I really, or how many times we beat ourselves up about things. So emotional intelligence is about becoming very self-aware of all these facets of our lives that make us feel good so that we can continue to thrive to another level to feel better and better and better. And we can still make the choices on, on, on our knowledge. Um, Jamie Roderick back there, we, we were, where is Jamie? Oh, there she is. She had an event in Philadelphia area last week and I forgot it was the anniversary party for her company and they were having anniversary cake, and I was giving a, a, a similar lecture <laughs> right before. <laughs> and I was like, oops, I'm so sorry to the lady that baked the cake. <laughs> I 
Um, but anyway, it's still a conscious choice. There, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Um, I'm not saying that every choice that I make is perfect, but when you're more emotionally intelligent, you make more consistent choices that better you, that make you move forward faster. So I'm just gonna go through this really quick.